The Basilosaurus, whose skeleton is pictured here, has a name that in Latin means King Lizard. Despite this, it is actually an extinct species of ancient whale. So why hasn't anyone fixed the misnomer? Well, the answer is both simple and somehow also embroiled in a seemingly eternal disagreement. Allow me to explain. Once upon a time, long, long ago, the fishy ancestors of mammals crawled up onto land to stay. Of course, I use the term stay loosely. Actually, on at least one, and possibly several occasions, small subpopulations of mammals got sick of living on land and waded back into the water permanently. And we know that because of some very interesting transitional fossils. Extinct whales that had legs. In fact, thanks to the fossil record, we know quite a lot about the evolution of the cetaceans, that is, the infraorder of mammals that includes whales, enough to write a children's book or two, at least. We can't know exactly what they looked like with their skin on, but we do have some artistic recreations. This one is called the Pachycetus, named for Pakistan, where much of the excavating work was done. And here we have the Ambulocetus, whose name literally translates to walking whale. There's a link in the doobly-doo to a video that models how these animals might have swum. Swam? Swimmed. <laughs> swim, swum. And then here we have the Bacillosaurus. It too had hind legs, but they were more of an afterthought. It was discovered by Dr. Richard Harlan in the 1830s, although the word discovered is arguably better replaced by the word named. Bacillosaurus fossils, especially their large vertebrae, were actually incredibly common in certain areas of Alabama in the United States. People had been using the vertebrae bones for garden gates, as and irons or cornerstones and fireplaces and chimneys, and even slept on them as pillows. In fact, the Bacillosaurus is the state fossil of Alabama and Mississippi. So it wasn't really discovering the bones that was Harlan's claim to fame, rather it was his belief that they belonged to a giant hundred foot long sea serpent. Now here's where that eternal disagreement I mentioned comes in. When it came to the great historical debates between evolution and creationism, whales have actually played both sides. For a while, especially before the first Bacillosaurus skeletons were identified, whales were seen as some of the best evidence for creationism, for a couple of reasons. The first reason was simply the mystery and majesty that surrounded them. You ever seen a whale leap out of the water? You're about to. Whoa! Okay, now imagine that that happens, except you've been at sea for months, in a boat built not by modern methods, but from wood and straw, and held together with hand-braided ropes and hand-paraded hopes. Hand-paraded hopes. Whales were terrifying leviathans, not constrained by known laws of nature, and probably not giving much thought to where they surfaced, or what they headbutted into tiny splinters. And, especially at that time in human history, anything terrifying and mysterious belonged to the realm of God. Creationist point number two. Whales are unique. They fit perfectly into the argument that all animals were created by an all-powerful God separately or all at once. Trying to imagine the alternative, something that wasn't a whale, becoming a whale slowly over time seemed completely insane. There are still some creationist websites up today that claim the evolution of the whale is impossible. Also importantly, the evolutionists at the time were not Darwinian evolutionists, because the origin of species hadn't been published yet. They were instead Lamarckians. Lamarckians believed that as an animal progresses through life, it strives to become a better version of itself. They believed that adaptations acquired during the life of an organism could be passed on to offspring of that organism. For example, if someone spent a lot of time kneeling, their children might have had stronger knees. Amazingly, the science of epigenetics has recently shown that some of their claims were not completely wrong, but that's outside the scope of this episode. Anyways, Lamarckians believed that life followed singular upward paths towards perfectionism, and that there was an identifiable order of evolutionary events, which is different from the Darwinian theory which is a bit more driven by randomness. To a Lamarckian, discovering a mammal that lived alongside the dinosaurs would be a victory for the creationists. After all, the creationists thought that all animals came into existence at one time. So if the creature was a new mammal, according to them, this actually worked against evolutionary theory. Problem was, the Lamarckians had recently found some jawbones that looked like they were from exactly that. Mammals living alongside the dinosaurs. 
But the Bacillosaurus discovery excited the Lamarckians because it had some unusual features that marine reptiles normally did not have, especially its hollow jawbone and specialized teeth that resembled a mammal's. This helped the Lamarckians' argument, who quickly claimed that the jawbones they had discovered from the Mesozoic area were also reptiles with just strangely mammalian teeth. And so, at that point in history, certain scientists were trying really, really hard to prove that certain mammals were actually lizards in order to stick it to creationists. The Lamarckians invited Harlan to present his alternative facts at a conference in 1839 in order to push their point against the creationists. But, also in attendance at that conference, was another scientist who knew a thing or two about fossils. His name was Richard Owen. Owen took a very close look at the teeth and determined beyond all doubt that they belonged to a mammal and not a reptile. He did this meticulously by comparing cross-sections, root structures, the lack of tooth uniformity, and many other considerations. He compiled his findings in a roughly 5,000-word paper, which he read aloud at the 1839 conference as well. Here's an excerpt. Owen also formally suggested that the name Bacillosaurus be changed to Zuglodon, a name that was much more fitting, but a lot less cool. However, only the person who named the animal could change the name of the animal, and so even though Harlan agreed with Owen that the Bacillosaurus was actually a mammal, he left the name as Bacillosaurus. And Owen couldn't pressure him into changing it, because Harlan pulled a real funny prank a few years later and died. Hello there, this video is actually a part of a playlist collaboration with a bunch of other educational YouTubers on the topic of evolution. Check out the playlist by clicking on the screen or in the description below. Or, if you're already in the playlist, congratulations! You are the chosen one, and Godspeed to the finish line. Or Darwin speed, I, I guess. Hmm.